I'm here today to present policies to you and some other procedures that we have such that you know what to do when you report to your locations. Today is the first day of the beginning of your life. You have made a decision that will impact children. And remember, children are your future. They will do the work we need done as we move gently into what will be our past, their future. Employee policies. Employee policies are one of those things that you cannot live without. They're much like the rules in your home. You cannot live without rules. You cannot live without structure. And structure is what we will put in place even though we are distance learning, virtual learning, learning by computer. You will have to have structure. We are a non-discriminatory county as most subdivisions are in the United States. So we do practice non-prejudicial actions toward race, religion, age, and any other discriminatory practices. We are under federal law to make sure we remain non-discriminatory. You will get a review of these policies when your principals meet with you. And I do believe that is day three, when you meet with your team. But one of the first policies that will be covered, you will also see in your employee handbook. No notes is needed today. You can pay close attention. You will receive the same policies online and also in your employee handbook. Bullying, harassment, and intimidation. I hate to read these things, but because we are a little different this year, I will read some of them so you know the descriptors. Intentional conduct. That means you have thought about what you're going to do, and it manifests itself verbally, physically, or in written form. I tell people all the time I love electronics. We will be using electronics in our classrooms. But I do want you to know, I don't expect for you to use social media unless you're communicating with parents. Social media is a little dangerous when it comes to... Mm, sorry. Uh, social media. Yes. Social media can become dangerous when it is done or used inappropriately. Please make sure if you're using social media, it is done for academic reasons only. Help the student report it if it's done inappropriately. Reporting is one of the most important things we will do as adults in a student's life. And it really doesn't make any difference if you are working as a psychologist, if you are working as a school counselor, speech language pathologist, any of those areas, children will report things to you. This is going to be different. You see, they come to your office. That will not happen this time. Transition when we go to in-school instruction, please make sure that you are aware of the things that I'm getting ready to tell you. Forms for reporting inappropriateness is located in the counselor's office. That will be going forward when CDC and the state lifts our barriers for in-school, in-person instruction. Many of the things I will say to you today will probably not be pertinent at this moment. However, you still will be held accountable for them. Child abuse and neglect reporting policy. Queen Anne County Public Schools, just like every other government agency, is responsible for reporting abuse. For those of us in social services, those of us in school systems, probably child care centers, we must report suspected child care abuse. 
There are several different types of abuses, one of which is physical. You may notice marks, unexplained. You may notice burns, unexplained. Sudden fractures, lacerations, or abrasions. Sexual abuse, probably the most notorious of all the abuses. Many different types of sexual abuse. I hate when I get to this slide. I give it every year and I've talked about it for the last 20 years as HR personnel. Make sure that you would report child pornography, suspicion of human trafficking, incest, rape, sexual offense, any degree. It's first, second, third, and fourth. You may not need to commit that to memory because sexual offenses are sexual offenses. We let courts decide and charging officers decide which degree of sexual abuse it is. Sodomy and any other unnatural sexual practices. Mental injury. Mental abuse is one of probably the hidden abuses. It can be anything from children being denied food. It affects their mental capacity. Social interaction, it really truly impacts their socialization. Remember, many of these things will not be recognized immediately because we will be virtual. However, there may be some small groups that come into the building. They are the most vulnerable of our student population. So always keep your eyes open. Child neglect comes in many forms. Are the children being bathed? Are the children reporting to school on time? Which could be looked at as a problem in the home. Now, make sure you have studied, watched, observed before you start reporting everything. Make sure you're using common sense when you report things because the division of that chat that that the division of <laughs> the division of child protective services will take every report seriously. Leaving children unattended. Now we're coming out of March through June. I believe the law says. 11 or older can be left alone. And then I believe it's 12 and 13 can watch a younger child. Please make sure that is not done on a continuous basis. If you have suspicions of such, please let your counselor or your principal know. If you let your counselor know, please also use copies that you will do with the forms. Let your principal or the principal secretary know. The principal and the secretary must practice confidentiality. So, provided you don't tell anyone, nobody will know that you are reporting any of the listed abuses. I think I already highlighted this a tag, but just make sure an oral report can be done immediately from the nearest form. In addition, when you make an oral report, the school employee or volunteer must inform the principal. I say that twice, it's written twice, or I've said it three times. It's because educational leaders from the superintendent down, they do not like surprises. They do not like surprises, so please let them know. Because the most embarrassing thing in the school is to have social work or the police show up. The principal has no idea why they are in their building and a call was not requested from their offices. Written report, they will follow up an oral report. The form number might change, but they're in the offices. So two copies will go to the Department of Social Services, one will go to the state's attorney, and one will go to the pupil personnel worker. If you're not familiar with a pupil personnel worker, it will come from student services. Mr. Matt Evans is in charge of student services. Very serious department. 
investigating very serious complaints and make sure, make sure you are ready to talk to any investigator that may come to your school. Once again, immunity and confidentiality. I serve in a confidential job position. What is shared in my office, and I say this all the time, the other ladies that you probably have already met, they know I say, whatever is said in this office stays in this office. The same thing applies when you are investigating, talking to, describing to, reporting to a police officer or principal or assistant principal or counselor. It depends on how the principal has described leadership roles in his schools. So remember that whatever you have filled out will be used in a legal proceeding if necessary and if deemed true by other evidence that those officers will gain as they investigate the case. Sometimes they can get back to you immediately and share with Mr. Evans or you, maybe not even you, it may be just Mr. Evans since that's his job or at least he's in charge of that department that also looks into these things with the people personnel worker, we will have some disposition in the case. You might could call Mr. Evans and ask him and he'll decide whether or not he can share the disposition of the report. Now, if you do not tell, there are sanctions for those of us who know things are going on and they do not report them. Let me repeat that again. There are sanctions, disciplinary actions that can be given to you in a proper procedure because you did not report suspected activity. You probably will not have real evidence. You will just have a heightened sense of awareness. Sexual harassment, Title IX. Gee, I do that all the time. No, I don't. I don't really do it all the time in my office and I don't want to do it all the time in my office. It has to do with maintaining a work environment that is free of sexual harassment. Many, many times, and there'll be some other slides for you where people have made jokes around a water fountain. They discuss movies that are inappropriate, television shows that is inappropriate. And in the 21st century, there are no safeguards that your eyes might not see something that you do not want to discuss outside of wherever you saw it. Jokes that are inappropriate, you can try yourself to tell people, I don't want to hear that. A normal individual will stop. But unfortunately, we do have people who work with us that do not have the best decision-making skills. There's a time and place for everything for people who want to participate in that and for that audience that want to hear it. But school or school buildings or school activities, not appropriate. Sexual harassment, it can come in two forms. It can come into the form that says quit pro quo. You've heard that a lot, it's a French term. And it means if you do this, I will do that. And it could be anything. It can go with cheating on the practice exam. If you give somebody the answers and all of you all know what that is, then I might do this for you. If you want an assistant principal job, then can you do this for me? If you want a principal job, I would hope that's not going on. Or as you rise to other statutory positions in education. There is no trade-off for any particular outcome in any business, but not ours, definitely not ours. We all live in examples. We use role, role models all the time, but we don't, many times don't say we're role models, but we are. We won't have a headline, we won't have a newspaper post to cover, but you are a role model. Children look up to you. They see you everywhere. They see you at the grocery store. Well, if you don't know, you will know. If you've been a camp counselor, 
or you were a church mom, or you had some other job or responsibility to let you work with children. They will remind you. This year, I had folks come and tell me, thus and so was in your class. I'm like, oh my goodness, not my class. Yes, your class. And apparently they finally remember me, so that's a good thing. That's where you want to be with young people as you mature in this particular location. House of work environment. You hear about it all the time. So far as I know, in this district, there has not been a concern or complaint. People want to leave their home. They want to come to a place that's pleasant. They want to come to a place where they enjoy coming because you're going to spend a phenomenal amount of time once we re-enter the buildings with folk, all ages, all races. So you have to remember to keep at least your space, because you are in control of your space, hostile free. Take steps. I mentioned it earlier. Stop it. Let's not participate in that. Don't do that. I don't want to hear that. So when those efforts fail, it will come to my office. As long as I remain Director of Human Resources, it will be reported directly to me. Drug and alcohol-free workplace. Each year that I give this, I say, why am I doing this slide? Those four points is the secret of keeping your job if you are a drinker. I don't have anything to do with the drug-free workplace because I know I have not hired not one person that has that issue because I did a background check. So you don't have that issue. However, it is stated by the federal government that school systems are drug and alcohol free. We do the testing. All of you all had the uh, friendly visit to lab court. All of you all did your fingerprints and you rolled them. We do surprise testing. If you should decide that you're going to act a little strange on your job and your principal thinks that it's out of your character, they will call the department head. More than likely, it could be a supervisor for your for high school people, supervisor for your content area, elementary people. It will be the people responsible for those of you all working in pre-K to five. Once again, please do not distribute, dispense, possess illegal drugs at any time. I can't keep up with what state approves what, but make sure you're not bringing drugs on campus. I've not had the incident where I've seen dogs come to check lockers for kids, but I had the unfortunate incident where they were coming to a school and the dog alerted on a teacher's car in the parking lot. Not good for me that day. Not good. Not in this county some years ago. I'm not going to disclose the school because I practice confidentiality. Sanction for the violation. I can assure you after the appropriate investigation, depending on what you have done, whether it's drinking or drugs, it is a possibility of dismissal. You can lose your job after appropriate investigation. Tobacco free, we almost don't even see people smoking anymore. But if you are a smoker, you will have to be able not to smoke once you return to the schoolhouse for at least seven and a half hours or, at, or eight. It depends on how long you stay in the building and stay on campus. All right, this is sensitive and I don't want to be anybody's business. I always adhere to the policy that I just didn't date anybody in education. The longer I stay around, the more I figure out that Maryland is a small place. 
And much like any other career you enter, most people know somebody or know somebody. That really doesn't change from when we were in college or in high school. So I impress upon you, do not date anybody on your staff that you are reporting to. And please, that's why I said red, you are prohibited to have relations with students. And you're saying, Mrs. Bass, why are you saying that? Don't we know better? Apparently, based on media, no, we don't know better. No phone calls to students. No text to students. They are forever. I don't know where that cloud is. I've not been able to identify the cloud. But apparently, if you find yourself in some quagmire that includes text, phone calls, emails, they can pull it from the cloud. So we will not engage in that behavior, and we will not have to meet under that investigative reason. If you see something that's inappropriate in the category of dating, communicating, any inappropriate action, please report it to the Human Resources Office. And that's between a student and an employee employee to employee if you think it's inappropriate if you think it's inappropriate we, we will investigate now this is something we may not share out because it's adult behavior or adult behavior with students so you might not know the outcome of the case most people guess at it but there is an investigation there will be an outcome but it might not be shared Self-reporting, charges, arrests, and convictions. All right, sometimes we make bad decisions. I don't know why we make bad decisions. And you make bad decisions and you think that the district you work for will not find out. We will. It is when we find out. Sometimes, if it would take place in this county, it's immediate when we come in in the morning. If it's another county, we have to wait till the counties communicate because they upload their data into a warehouse. So we'll find out, we'll get a flag. And if you should get in trouble in the federal jurisdiction, which is right across the bridge, down 50, they can call the FBI. It depends on what policeman you get that day. Whether you get a capital policeman, whether you get a DC policeman, whether you get a state trooper. They can call FBI depending on why they're pulling you over. If you find yourself a little intoxicated and you may get a DWI, call your supervisor or call me. Let me know. Honesty goes a long way. And make sure you do it within the 48 hours. I think highly of people who own their mistakes. Because I'm sure anything you could get charged with, arrested for, and convicted for, it is a true mistake. Use common sense. Be very, very careful who you socialize with because that is important. Many, many times we have people that we socialize with that might not help us in our career and maintaining a career in education. We work with children. Electronic network policy, I believe you'll get a sheet when you come back in the building or your principal will send it to you electronically. Electronically sign it and send it back in. This governs our technology. You all probably have received a laptop. I'm sure that Mr. Combs has given it to you by now and you will receive your email. They will send your email to your personal email so you can start participating, I believe, on Wednesday in any training you need to get going forward to impact the engagement of the children as far as instruction is concerned. But if they're issued by us, make sure it's used for instruction. Mr. Combs, supervisor of technology, he watches everything. A lot of screens, it's like Mission Impossible. So, 
if you have been assigned anything by your principal that is property of Queen Anne County Public Schools, it is to be used for education and instruction. We already talked about social network. I don't like it. I did Google myself. There's nothing out there but all the jobs I've held or positions, people like to say. Facebook, I know, it's the grandmother of uh, electronic communication. I know we got TikTok, we got Twitter, LinkedIn, they just laid off 12,000 people. I'm not sure about them if they're gonna be around. Do not take pictures, do not distribute pictures that is inappropriate of yourself. And let me say something to you all right now. One of the reasons the public is so hard on us is we don't follow directions. Well, we like to give directions, but we like to give directions to little people or middle-sized people or taller people, but they just in 10th grade. Please do not find yourself or having friends take pictures of you and you post them. Don't do it, period. But if you're doing it when you're supposed to be working with the children and giving them instruction, please don't do that. That gives us a horrible reputation on the street. If you're supposed to be working whatever the school hours that your principals give you, I don't want to find out you're at the beach, any of them. I won't find out if you, if you don't post them. Your friend will post them. They're not your friend. They'll keep their job. They may not have a policy wherever they work, if they work. So please, don't even get this no from August 17th until they tell us we're getting out in June. Let's not engage in that. I'm not saying you can't do family portraits and that kind of stuff when it's appropriate. Because if you're posting them during school hours, you're not teaching. So make sure, just, just, take, a little, just take a little diet off of that. You know, separate yourself a little bit outside of communicating in a school-based group. I'm talking about how you maintain your personal behavior. Because there are no secrets. We think it's a secret. It'll get back here. We just don't know whether it's sooner or later. You all will have a whole section on Bloodborne pathogens given by your nurse. Your nurse at your school, I don't know when it's going to be done. It's not going to be done electronically through human resources, but I am sure each principal is preparing whatever they need to give out as far as their school is concerned. But if you do have a spill, make sure you know the policy for reporting a spill and you are not to clean up a spill. Our custodial staff has been trained in cleaning up any pathogens that should be spilled. And that includes for the child is sick. I know elementary school kids, I know sometimes they don't feel too good in the tummy. They don't know they don't feel too good in the tummy, but we'll find out sooner or later. And like I said, I'm not a school nurse. I'm a principal by certification and an HR supervisor. But just make sure you pay close attention to that when you're principal. And I do believe the nurse is going to do it. I could be misspeaking, but I think the nurse, you do have nurses. You all are so lucky. In this county, there is a nurse in every school. So when you do go back in the building, and her job is going to be so much more different this year than it's ever been. And of course, we now have added to the list, which we never, we talk about hepatitis, we talk about meningitis. We hear about that with college outbreaks especially. AIDS, HIV, almost dormant. Don't tell anybody. Very few people are coming up with new cases. It might be some people suffering from previous activity years ago. Tuberculosis, I haven't, I haven't heard of it on the rise. It's one of my generation diseases that they had to fight. And we used to get vaccinated in the school. We used to put, a little, it was a little red dot on the sugar cube. And we took it in third grade. But I'm, I'm not even sure they give it now. COVID-19, I have a slide dedicated to COVID-19. 
because we're getting information just like you're getting information. Protect yourself. You're going to wash your hands. You have been washing your hands more than you have ever done, probably in your life. They have us, well, I washed my hands before I came into the room. We have gel distributed around different parts of this room, and I already know that your hand sanitizer, gloves, and masks, in case you forget your own, because I know it's a whole new industry on making masks. It's all kinds of cute masks. It's rhinestone masks. It's masks with skulls on them. It's masks with tic-tac-toe on, on, on it. They're hot. Who I wear when I got to, and I do wear when I got to, now that's I'm in my little pod that we've been together since March. So protect yourself. I'm in that age sensitive group. Guess which one? COVID-19 protections and preparations. All right. I got this cute little hand sanitizer thing because I just don't like the regular gel. So I put it in, I put it in like a, a bath and body work hanging on my pocketbook. Purses for your generation. I spray, I rub, make sure it's 75% alcohol. Make sure it's not made in China, they say send it back. So keep your hand sanitizer. You will have the regular hand sanitizer in the school. It might be in a gallon jug, but it'll look like this. We purchased tons of it. All right, mask. You have your mask. Make sure it fits and you won't hear me, but I'm going to demonstrate. Mask. around your ears, under your chin, fit it around your nose. Should look like this. And the ones with the adjustable ones, somehow I think my ears came closer to my jaws, but you can get adjustable. When you come in the door for all of the buildings, Maria Fellows is our nurse supervisor. She has prepared a log. She has prepared the 10 question paper you'll see, questionnaire. It'll have the 10 questions that you all know if you're going to the gym, if you've been to the salon. I don't know if they do it at the restaurant, but they definitely do it at personal businesses. Massage, tattoo. So they ask you the 10 questions. We do it here every morning. We sign into the log every morning. And Mrs. Fellows, who's our nurse supervisor, she is stationed here. She has asked each of us to take our temperature when we leave our house. I'm 97.1 every day. So I think I'm a little cold natured. I'm born in February, so I just never warmed up. Everything I said is required. The mask, the 10, well, I am 10 feet apart. If you've been in my office and if you were processing my office, I put down race and stripe tapes. I'm still a teacher at heart. And before everybody, well, not everybody has returned, but before the bulk of my office returned, I measured out 10 feet. I put little X's where you stand if you come in your mask. And then I put X's where you sit under the chair and we sanitize, clean, and disinfect behind each person visiting our office that are not people assigned to this building. So I have people who are doing a lot of other things. On your job description is probably number 13, all other duties and signs. So, when you get to your area, if you're coming into the building for any reason, please make sure that you clean, sanitize, and disinfect your area. So when we do have to go in buildings, I'm not sure when that will start, make sure you stay in that area. Make sure you stay in that area. 
and you are responsible for cleaning that area. This year, you will not be doing a lot of laminates and a lot of things on the wall because our custodial staff will still have to clean behind you for CDC standards for cleaning public spaces. If you have any concerns, any concerns, please call me. I'm usually there. The only time that I used to be in the office was February through May. I was recruiting. I don't know what that's going to look like. It's been virtual. It has been virtual for all the colleges, the student teachers that I used to meet on campus. It has been virtual. So I, I implore you, please work with us this year. We don't know what the end will be, but please follow those directions because you don't know what underlying conditions you have or what somebody else has, but they certainly find it when you test positive for COVID number 19. It's a little scary folks, so I need to be on board, help me, help you, and then we'll help somebody else. Employee attendance. I do evaluations every year, and there are scores for people outside of the classroom. So as you move through your career, make sure you are attending your job. Go to work, please. Go to work. If you don't come to the online or you don't come to the classroom, the children will miss a lesson. It's a little easier this year. It's a little easier this year because if you are staying stationary at home, home office, you probably will not need a substitute unless you're having families and then you'll work through murder and she will find you a long-term sub or Sarah. It's pretty closely linked to what you're doing, but we'll, pass, we'll, we'll, we'll cover that path when we get to it. There's a way that you check in for us, which is a little bit different. You use your identification badge, wear that all the time, it's really so in case of emergency, we know who are in the building. You will come in, there is an ADP, kind of like a time clock. You will swipe in. That's why this badge is really important to you. We in Central Office will know where you are in case you have a job like a speech pathologist or a psychologist. We want to know where you are just in case of emergency. I was born, and I'm not sure I hate to say this because I'm not sure if you were born, but Maryland had an earthquake. We, in the county that I was working at at that time, there was no ADP. So when that building started shaking, it's really funny. I lived in California a while ago to school. Everybody ran out the front door. I'm like, where are the people going? It's an earthquake. I'm, the very large windows I could see outside, they could see me. I'm waving at them. I'm like, I don't know why y'all outside, because if this top of this building comes down, y'all are gone. I'm under the desk. So no one forget the director of employee services came in and said, oh, no, bad, you got to go outside. I'm like, it's an earthquake. We won't be on the desk. But everybody was outside but me. It's not five though. It's an earthquake. So if we had had this, once they checked the system, they would have known that I didn't swipe out because those people swiped out. They were really conditionally similar. They, they swiped or would have swiped. Then that way you would have known where the people were if they were in the building or out the building. So badge identification, wear it all the time. It is for safety and to know where you are. It looks just like that. If you were coming in here today, we usually have a meet and greet. However, we could not do that this year because it's more 10 of you and we don't have the footage, but you would have swiped in. So that would have been for new people. That's the first day of the rest of your life that will be documented. You will be a documented employee. Central substitute call system. If you're going to be out, it is web-based. Your school secretary will talk to you, excuse me, about that. You'll have a presentation, and it's little. It is so simple to use. 
but make sure when you're going to be out, including when you are teaching virtually, including when you're teaching virtually, you will need a substitute. Instructions will be emailed to you. It's very simple. And please read your email. Please read your emails. Certain important dates get by you because you don't read the email. And read everything that comes from district email. Employee leave, 10 months, get 10 days. 11 months, it's a day a month. And four personal business. All of you all are in that unit, unit one. All right, every year, maybe not this year, this is different, but going forward, please do not use all your sick days before February. Don't take a Monday or Friday before Christmas. Don't take Monday and Tuesday before Christmas because when I look back when people were sick, they always sick before all day. But when you run out of leave, and that would be 14 days for most of you all in this room. 14 days. I don't have any other leave to give you. That then will cause you to go in lost pay state. If you don't have any leave, you will not get paid. Oh, you take off. And your principal will be watching that. Please do your just duty when instructing children. It doesn't last all day and all night. You work in one shift. Several other leaves that Teresa Steinheis will talk to you about will be family and medical leave, parental leave, a leave of absence. You have to be here a certain amount of time for that leave and extended sick leave. You will earn that. And if you're on FMLA, we work with that. But that requires documentation from your doctor. So you'll get the papers from Teresa if you need that. Negotiate agreements. Always read your contract. You are unit one. Specificated. Read your contract. I'm not going to read it for you, but I certainly use it if I have to talk to you. Read your contract. It is online. And I know the next four days will be so busy, but at some point, read your contract. I don't think we're going to have to worry about inclement weather. I'm guessing at this, why we need snow days. Now, the only reason we could use a snow day is a whole geographical area has an electronic shutdown that needs no internet. So I'm not real sure about this. I'll send you out something, but I just don't see snow days immediately. Now, and I'm filming this today. Y'all need to know it's 101 outside. So I can't even think about snow days. But I don't think it's going to be... It may be a fall delay simply because we do have some children that will need to take a bus to some special centers. But I don't think it's going to impact those of us that's working virtually. And I've worked virtually ever since March 13th, Friday the 13th. It was really not a good day. So I'll get back to you about cold blue, cold red, because now we really can work. You all have wonderful benefits. Absolute wonderful benefits. School systems have absolutely, no matter how bad or how good, they're really better than some things you can get in private industry. They really are. Read them. When you get your benefits, you're gonna have a little Google Meet with Teresa. She's gonna put you like, I think in groups of five, maybe seven, so you all can answer her questions directly. I usually try to stay in my lane and that's instruction and human error. I hate that part, but it's instruction and employment, but not employee benefits, because they're guided by law or either by the contract and your time served in that capacity. You get health insurance. Teresa will define the difference, and in the package, you get medical prescription, vision, and dental. It's relatively cheap, but you have a choice of two. All of you all will sign or have signed 
Maryland State Retirement Teacher Pension Plan. You are in it with the state troopers. You are, you are in the same retirement plan. Well, I, I don't think y'all want to talk about that right now. That is, even, that is not even a benefit you get till 30 years service and a combination of 85 years. You got to be 55, 30 years, and I think it went up to 87. I might be wrong, but we'll cross that bridge when you get to it. Y'all will. I won't be here 30 years from now. And it's a mandatory deduction out of your checks that is 7%. Everybody gets term life, and you can buy extra if you'd like to. It doesn't leave with you. When you leave, it's gone. And you can buy your own. Disability, God forbid you all get hurt. There are instances where you might be eligible for disability insurance. Any questions, ask Ms. Steinheim. Flexible spending, you can put into what I call the prescription charge card. They call it flexible spending. You can put into that for any medications you might want to get. So as opposed to just using a debit card, that is a debit card strictly for prescriptions. Eyeglasses, you can get eyeglasses. Tax shelters, I am not the person to talk to about that. AIG and several other people will try to visit you because they will ask us for the new employee list, but it won't be as many as it has been. Years past, it was anywhere from 50 to 40 teachers we hired. That's not the case this year. Most people stayed with us. And if you were here, I would take questions. Feel free to call my office. I need to answer my own phone. So call me if you have any, any questions. When Teresa comes before you, virtually ask her, and for certification information for the state, you will be talking to Sarah House, and you will meet her somewhere virtually, probably before me or after me. Have a great day.